All right, it's five o'clock, so wake up. I still have to go to an Oakland City Council meeting tonight, so you could be me. Um, I want to share with you my Code for America story. It's a personal one, um, which started in January of 2012 when I filled out that initial application online to, for Oakland to be a fellowship city. Uh, in January 2012, Oakland was in a pretty bad spot. Um, we had had this uh, pretty difficult time in dealing with something called Occupy Oakland. Um, Chris picked a very happy, friendly picture, but you might remember some images with tear gas and riot police that sparked international protests over Oakland. Not a good moment. Uh, and then next, we were slammed with the sudden elimination of redevelopment funding. We had five weeks to cut $28 million out of our budget. It was a pretty low moment in our history. But it was during these times that I wanted so badly for people to see Oakland the way that I do, to not see these images of chaos and destruction and disorganization. I knew that we were much better than this. Uh, I knew that we could harness that social energy for good and that out of this crisis, we could find some smart and innovative solutions. And I also knew that we already had the dedicated workforce. We already had these incredible citizen volunteers that were starting to kind of coalesce. And that Code for America could be the perfect vehicle to change that image of Oakland. Now, just building the internal team to put together our Code for America application was just a great experience in itself. You just met Karen uh, a second ago, the fabulous Karen. Hi, Quinn. Um, despite our incredible uh, challenges in Oakland, just putting together the application started to energize us. It made us hopeful. It made us feel like we could do this. And we did. We got picked. So our fellowship experience was everything that we dreamed it would be. Uh, Chris, Richa, and Sheila just energized our already growing volunteer corps, our brigade called Open Oakland. I want to give a special shout out to Eddie and Steve out there. Woohoo! <laughs> they started to energize our otherwise pretty depressed workforce by interviewing them all and holding these open coffee office hours. Um, they started to just kind of draw people out. Uh, like I said, these innovative workers and citizens had been there all the time. They just needed to be kind of introduced to one another and connected. Uh, our code fellows also gave us a fun new vocabulary. Uh, now words like API and open source and unconference are just skipping off the lips of Oakland workers everywhere. <laughs> they even have made it to the lips of my policy makers. Um, I, I have to say that a year and a half ago, before we were a code uh, city, I introduced uh, open data legislation in the city council and it went down in flames. But now that we've been a Code for America city, um, it's on the docket tonight. It's even on the consent calendar. That means so far, no one's even complained about it. <laughs> so uh, wish me luck. I hope I have a unanimous vote tonight. And I do, again, want to really thank Steve Spiker from Urban Strategies Council. They played a great role in helping us have a really strong and inclusive policy. So our code fellows even got us some positive press in Time magazine with a picture that looked a lot prettier than the, the uh, Occupy Oakland picture. Um, and of course, they built us that fabulous app the, uh, that they showed you before to deal with our voluminous Freedom of Information Act requests. And just as a side note, I just think it's so fitting that Code for America developed a Freedom of Information Act app because isn't that kind of what Code for America is about? freeing information. But anyway, with all due respect to the fabulous app, it actually was the least valuable thing that Code for America did for Oakland last year. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Code for America brought its total package to Oakland, and I, I actually got that from Jen. That was, that was her uh, description. We used it all. We used the fellows, we developed the app, we built the community through the brigade, we used accelerator products, and I am a great consumer of the peer network. 
But now that our fellowship year is coming to an end, and we have to relinquish our beloved fellows, and, and they are beloved, to hopefully some higher paying jobs, um, and we also have to give up one of our best city employees that Code for America decided to steal from the city of Oakland. <laughs> no resentment there. Um, we did realize that this total package was actually a gift. Come on, give me my gift. There we go. Oh. <laughs> Go for America left us with this incredible new energy. Um, and I can only see it getting stronger. I decided it's actually a giant magnet. That's my new Code for America symbol, the giant magnet. And that magnet is going to just keep yanking bureaucrats out of their silos. It's going to keep yanking citizens to come together at the brigade and do hackathons and see how they can take their skills and help their city. It is going to keep drawing citizens to participate in their local government for the first time because there's never been an easy way to do it. And hopefully, it's also going to continue to draw resources to Oakland to continue this work. Thank you, Oakland sponsors. <sighs> like all American cities, Oakland faces some incredibly tough problems. Uh, we have a crumbling infrastructure. We have an unacceptable crime rate. And we have heartbreaking poverty. But Code for America uh, has given Oakland the courage to dream. It's let us see that we have that innovative spirit and we have the tools to solve some of these problems. It's made us believe that we can do this. And if Oakland can do this, so can you. Thank you. <laughs>